Committee reports. Any legislative updates? Um, yep, just uh, a couple of brief things. So number one, we have um, <clears throat> the Senate confirmed um, Steve Dakin as the inaugural director of the Department of Education and Workforce. Um, that was by a vote of 25 to 6. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, I want to bring your attention to um, HB, HB 8. Let me just get to that. <laughs> and HB 8 is a, a bill that was actually just, um, just introduced by uh, one of our very own, and that is um, Sarah Carruthers here in, in Hamilton. So HB 8 um, is the bill that would enact the Parents' Bill of Rights requiring public schools to adopt a policy on parental notification regarding uh, student health and well-being and instructional materials with sexual um, content. So the substitute version does the following includes definitions for the terms age appropriate, developmentally appropriate, um, that are modeled on existing federal law, um, clarifies that the provisions apply to services offered or facilitated by a school. <clears throat> so this is um, in a committee right now, it is in the Senate Education Committee. So. Um, in my time and not being on the board, on the board, I will continue to kind of keep an eye on legislation, and I'll contact you and <laughs> let you know how things are going on. But there are uh, quite a few things that are happening. But that was one that I, I wanted to bring to your attention, since there's always a lot of talk about uh, the Parents' Bill of Rights. I want rights. I just wanted you to know that that's been introduced, and we'll follow the transition of it. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Shorter. Welcome. I'll give the Butler Tech report. At our November meeting, we talked about enrollment. Uh, we are at full capacity at Butler Tech. Enrollment will be uh, 3,925 full-time equivalent students, and, and Butler Tech will touch 18,000 students next year. And of course, that is not just at the different Butler Tech campuses, but also at Butler Tech programming at all of the home high schools and even middle schools, right, where, where they also have Butler Tech classes. Uh, also, ironically, the state of Ohio has dedicated $100 million to the expansion of career tech educational institutions, and Butler Tech was awarded $7.2 million that they will use for an expansion project at the Bioscience Center at their middle, uh, excuse me, at their Westchester campus that will, uh, uh, they hope to expand by 350 students when that, when that project's done. Thank you. Mrs. Gundram isn't here for student <coughs> achievement. Uh, Parks and Recreation, Mr. Clark. Yes, I'll uh, start backwards, farther out and work backwards on dates. I think Mr. Smith will like this. Uh, the Community Arts Center on January um, uh, 4th is having a ultimate Elvis show Mm -hmm. I, I believe Mr. Smith is a Elvis fan from I, I what I've seen in some recent past videos and in-person experiences. <laughs> uh, it's a two-hour show goes through Elvis's life, so that's, that's kind of cool. Um, there's still time to vote on uh, community lights. You have till noon tomorrow. Uh, you can send in an address for houses that have the best light show, mm -hmm. and the uh, city will be voting on that. Oh. And um, just if you haven't been down to Village Green lately, just drive through there at night. Uh, drive through a lot of the neighborhoods. A lot of people are being festive this year. Even on our, our street, there's one block that I think every house has some kind of outside lighting uh, display up, which has never happened the 21 years I've been on that block. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So um, yeah, just experience the park stuff. Go to CAC and check out the Christmas trees there and, and the events that are going on. So. That's all I have for right now, sir. Great. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, Mr. Smith, do you have a planning commission uh, report? Uh, yeah, uh, nothing concrete. Mr. Robert, uh, Robertson just stated that uh, the board will be interested uh, in hearing the details once they're finalized, uh, considerations for vaping and smoke shops in the city, and what conditions qualify a business as a vape shop. So. 
nothing finalized at this moment. Uh, for those that follow, there's been some discussion uh, in the city about um, possibly attempting to reduce the number of smoke and vape shops. Um, so I will be happy to give that update once I have it. Uh, he says their next meeting is not scheduled until January 10th. Great. That's it for the Planning Commission this evening. Thank you, Mr. Smith.